Yugi Bros! What's up guys, Yugi Bros here with another dueling book replay. We have a very interesting matchup today. It's Relinquished or GK Relinquished. It's got a GK engine versus uh, what I've been calling Ectoplasmic Booster. It's the best way I could see how to utilize zombies currently. Uh, there's not very wa many ways to utilize zombies in duel in speed duel so far, so this is what I came up with. Um, we're just gonna like buff them to Kingdom Come and beat face. So as you go, as you see, for once the skills flip, which is great for the replay. For finally, <laughs> I was having a problem with that forever. So they wonder wand a recruiter and. They pumped this one to 17, but what they didn't realize was my monster was 17, so they both die. Uh, so what's cool about this deck is that it gets real big real quick. Also, we're playing Jar of Greed because we really just don't want to play anything else to slow that deck down. We kind of want this to be as fast as possible and beat as fast as possible. So now we're swinging with 1800 Dragon Zombie. So the cool thing about Ectoplasmic is it gives... Every, time, every turn you can put a counter on it if you control a zombie. And every counter, you gain 100 attack, you lose 100 defense, but you take double battle damage uh, with battles involving zombies. So you really make it your business to make sure that you protect the zombies at all costs, and you just make them really strong. Like, Costin right now is already at 2,000 attack. Uh, Dragon Zombies at 19. You don't care about the defense, it lowers the defense, it's fine. You're never going to put them in defense unless your opponent does, and in which case you just... Um, you, you you save them. As you can see, Relinquish here bricks in real hard. <laughs> Opening to Relinquish, drawing the third off Senju. Uh, Senju swings. Or, I'm sorry, Kostin swings, and then, yeah, they reveal all three Relinquish. So, game one, game one. I feel like my game ones and all my replays are very quick, and then the other two matches are very, <laughs> and very, very, very skillful. <laughs> and back and forth. Alright, so. We're gonna go first, Relinquish elects to go second. We're gonna put our counter on that. P set our cards and pass. They're gonna summon a recruiter, set a kunai. It's the alternative art for the people that didn't know, if it looks a little weird to you. We're gonna draw a sphere, so we're just gonna pump it up by another hundred and swing. And they'll kunai. Switch to the defense and pump it. And of course they top deck Black Illusion Ritual. I swear everybody draws better with Relinquish than I do. <laughs> so they'll get that out to get the dragon zombie. Uh, and they'll swing for 16. You don't take double battle damage unless it control unless you control a zombie. Unless you have a battle in uh, including a zombie, so it's just regular damage here. Uh, we'll summon cost and pass. It's at 2,000 attack, so Relinquish has defense for days, though, as you can see with the spheres. So they'll gladly take that so that they can unequip. We draw a wasteland. We play one wasteland just as an extra little buff, so we're putting a two counter on it to remind people it's 200 extra attack. We summon Sphere Karibo because we think if they have a Sphere Karibo, one of these attacks is going to go through. Little did I know they had two Sphere Karibos, so here we are. <laughs> so they'll take the cost in. And this is a really bad matchup for the zombie deck because unless you have two or more zombies swinging in Relinquished constantly, and they don't have back row, which is very unlikely with Relinquished, uh, you really can't get through their wall of stealing your monster every time. So we drew Sphere, we're going to have this Sphere, oh no, I'm sorry, we Windstorm here. Stall as long as possible. We draw Snake Hair, we play one Snake Hair because there are no other stronger zombies in this game currently. Uh, but right now she's 2200 by herself with the Wasteland and Ecto, so like, late game, she gets pretty big. Uh, I'd prefer to play like stronger zombies, but we only have Cost and Dragon Zombie, and Snake Hair is a one of in here. Uh, we take the damage on Sphere because we really don't want to waste the Kunai. <laughs> um... Snake hair is the only thing we got. We set Jargrade. Jargrade's only downfall is if you don't like, in a situation like this, draw Sphere Karibo off the Jargrade. It's really garbage. Uh, I think later on I end up switching it for Half Shut in this deck, just to give the deck more, like, resilience. And it's also got, a, like, a pretty meh matchup against Blue Eyes, so if you make the Blue Eyes weaker, it doesn't really matter if it dies or not. The point is you're doing the damage. So, yeah. We're not looking good here. We're just going to set and stall. Let's see how long we can go with this. They swing with Relinquish. We're going to Kunai. We can't burn the Windstorm here. Uh, yeah, we draw Jargreed, and this is where Jargreed is kind of meh. So, 
Like, the upside of Jargreed is you have it early. Yeah, I didn't hit Sphere Karibo. If you have Jargreed early, you can gain really quick advantage uh, in in speed. And it's kind of like the Tribal Synergy idea where you draw like two to three early with that skill and you out advantage your opponent. Alright, so we go to game three. I swear this game is the Battle of Windstorms. <laughs> Alright, they're gonna go first, they're gonna set, set, pass. We're gonna draw, Dragon Zombie, put a counter on it. Set the Windstorm, swing in for 17. That's a recruiter, they're gonna search a recruiter. The reason there's recruiters and Wonder Wands in this build is just it's the fastest way I feel like to make Relinquished, not garbage. So you can thin your deck and also draw a few, a few off uh, Wonder Wand. But a Wonder Wand also can go on Relinquish if you wanted it to. So they get the Relinquished, of course. Swinging in for 16. We'll take it. We don't want to waste a Windstorm on that. And we're costing. Pump it up a little bit. And pass because if we swing, the Dragon Zombie will die. The Relinquish won't and then they'll just absorb our monsters. So we're just summoning Costin as a chump block and or defense. If they want to get rid of their monster equip with it, we're going to make them do it, not us. Uh, but they can also just as easily stall and go back and forth here and build up their resources. So we're going to draw greed, we're going to hit the wasteland, we're going to normal snake hair, we're going to put a counter on Ecto like we almost forgot to. So everything, every zombie on your field is plus six right now. So we try this, obviously it doesn't work, we don't expect it to at this point. They summon Senju, get their third relinquished. Um, Black Illusion, the Sphere in the Grave for Relinquish number two. I don't know why the interdimensional tra matter here. I I think it was to make room to take the Snake Hair, but they don't need to do that. I don't know if they knew that or not. Because it just equips. Like, we would have just moved something over real quick. Alright, so they're kind of in the driver's seat right now with double Relinquish. Oh, and Senju, yeah, because that comes back. Um, we sit and pass. They're going to play around the Windstorm here. We're going to flip it anyway, because we'd rather take one attack than two. And we could Sphere if we needed to, but we're not going to. We draw a Dragon Zombie, thank God. <laughs> so we normal this. We set two. We pump Ecto to five. So plus seven, so it's... 2300 Dragon Zombie will kill Senju because that's no threat. We can't really hit any of the Relinquishes. But they know that they can, and if they do, they'll do effect damage equal and and that'll kill us. So we're going to Windstorm. We're going to set. going to try again. At this point, we're stalling, and we realize we can just stall them out of their deck um, and just build up defenses here with our monsters at huge attack points. So, that's our game plan now, which is a really terrible game plan. But when you're when you're stuck this close, it's it's kind of it's kind of all you can do. All right, so we can wall now forever, which is great because even if they lose one of their uh, equips, we can still wall for a while. So they'll try to swing in again. Will Kunai? I mean, it's smart to play around the windstorm, but we're gonna run out of cards and then yeah, and then <laughs> old faithful jaw of greed. Literally dead. <laughs> Granted, if it was half shot, we couldn't set it. So, all right. So they're gonna be the smart play. Take one hit and then windstorm, so that they can take one. And of course, they have defense forever. I don't know if they've caught wind of our plan yet, but we kind of. All right. So now we windstorm. Now we have sphere. Thank God we have something. <laughs> So we're going to pump Ecto just because we can. They're all plus 12, except Dragon Zombie's got the Kunai, so he's, he's plus 17. Uh, yeah, they're going to play around Windstorm here. We're going to Sphere. And then we're going to draw Kunai. They have one card left in deck. So they Windstorm. So here, here's the real good play. So they draw into the last card, but they Windstormed, so minor in attack mode. So if they swing... The, I'll take equal effect damage, so I kunai one, but I can't stop the other one, so I just draw greed for you, for the heck of it. 
And they swing in, and that's game, because they'll take the damage, but I'll take the difference is effect damage because of Relinquish's effect. So that is the match in a nutshell. It was crazy uh, back and forth. Um, I think the zombie deck has a lot of potential going forward. I know I say that about a lot of decks, but we've already been confirmed for Book of Life in set 3 and a skill that apparently dumps a lot of zombies to the grave real quick. So if that doesn't scream King of the Skull Servants dot deck in the future, I don't know what does. But I think um, Ectoplasmic Fortification is cool. Uh, if that other skill ends up being way better, then of course it's not going to see its run much further into the game, but it's really been a cool thing to mess with. Uh, I do want to say that this deck has a really good matchup against Amazon because Sage can never get over anything because everything is already bigger than it, unless you put something in defense or equip Heirloom to it, but most of the time you're countering the Sage with your defenses, and Swordswoman is the end-all be-all in that matchup, because if you, let's say you have a, a zombie that, let's say you have Snake Hair, for example, and you have Ectoplasmic on it at five counters, so she's 2,000 attack, and she's attacking a Swordswoman. The problem with Swordswoman is that it doubles the, or that it, that it inflicts the battle damage to you, and because it's battle damage, Ectoplasmic will then double it. So if you're swinging over a Swordswoman at uh, 2,000 attack versus the 15 on the Swordswoman, uh, you would take five because of Swordswoman, but because it's battle damage, Ecto would double it, and you would take two. Uh, you would take a thousand. I'm not 100% uh, sure on that ruling, but from judges that I've asked, that's apparently how it goes. Either way, I still think the deck has a really good matchup against Amazon because uh, most of the time against that deck, you won't keep. You don't have to keep pumping Ecto. You give it like three counters, and then all your monsters are effectively over all the Amazons, and you don't care anymore. And then you kind of just play the little whittle game where you whittle them down and uh, and then that's it. Of course, if you side Twister too, that's like an extra bonus. Twister and Trap Jammer, like it sounds really good. Uh, but yeah, guys, uh, comment, like, and subscribe as always. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see any more uh, random rogue decks, uh, deck replays. Uh, I only, we only have, what, two weeks? We have two weeks left until the new set, so I'm kind of like... Trying to pull out all the stops until we get new stuff. We got a spoiler yesterday for Legendary Fisherman, but we knew that was going to be in there already. So hopefully they'll spoil some more interesting stuff soon so we can start gauging where we're going with the format. Um, but anyways, guys, check out our Patreon in the description below. Click that notification bell to get all of our latest updates, and I will see you guys later. Peace out.